It's great to be talking with you again after Pursuit last year. Yeah, likewise, yeah. And I got to tell you, I loved Pursuit, but give me a well-made Western, and I am beyond overjoyed, and that's exactly what you have done. Oh, wow, thank you. I appreciate that, Daddy. This is such a terrific film. You really celebrate the Old West. You capture it perfectly. You've got Adam. You're working with him again as your cinematographer. You shoot in the Old West town. You, met, you utilize the town, every corner of it, your staging of everything, the blocking. You lean into using visual grammar for the power structure of the characters with dutching of the cameras. And all of that just buttresses this incredible cast that you've put together. Absolutely fabulous job, Brian. I love this film. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you. How did this one come into your hands? And you didn't write this one, but... You director, editor, you're one of the producers on it. How did this find its way to you? Um, so the graphic novel, I mean, the, the company Source Point Press. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we, you know, I've done, I did Rotten Tell for them, and they came to me and said, "Hey, we have a whole bunch of properties. Pick one." And <laughs> so I started reading through their properties, and No Rest for the Wicked, Dead Man's Hand was one of the novels. I was like, "Well, this is this is pretty cool," and so. Um, and so I took the, you know, I took the novel and, and handed it off to Corin Nemec and said, Corin, give me, give me a, give me a first draft. And so Corin went through and, and did an adaptation. And, um, and so that's how it really came about is from that end. And then, and then I had Lionsgate after Pursuit come to me and ask, um, you know, what do I have? And I said, are well, you guys interested in a Western? And I said, absolutely. And so they, um. And so it just kind of the marriage of the two, you know, kind of just good timing. It's the script had been written long before they said, absolutely. We've had the script probably for three or four years before we actually filmed it. And, uh, was just constantly always working on it and honing it, you know, but, uh, well, you really honed it to perfection. I'm not surprised that Lionsgate said, what do you got? And yeah, we'll do a Western. You know, we can all thank Taylor Sheridan for the resurgence of the Western, I think. And you you certainly made the most of ta what Taylor Sheridan has given us, uh, bringing in Cole Hauser and 4EJ Smith and Mo. That is like a coup de grace in casting on this film, Brian. Because you're going to draw in all of the diehard Yellowstone fans to see this film who are all chomping at the bit while we're waiting for part two of season five and the end of the Yellowstone series proper. So to see yeah. their favorite actors in a Western, you're going to get the Yellowstone audience. Yeah, no, we were very fortunate. That was, that that has uh, quite a bit to do with Cole. I mean, Cole, Cole came on board and was like, "Hey, you know, I've got some friends who aren't who aren't <laughs> obviously working, and so they, so he uh, he made a few phone calls, and uh, yeah, when, and Forey and Mo joined in, and then Forey's son Forrest, who plays young, you know, who, who plays uh, Forey as a young man in, in Yellowstone, so." Um, yeah, so, you know, we, we, it, it was, I was very fortunate and, 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 you know, they're all phenomenal actors and it was, uh, yeah, it really was a coup de grace. It was Randall Battenkopf who, um, was longtime friends with Cole, you know, and so, um, uh, R Randall introduced us and, and then, um, Cole, of course, you know, he, he, he's definitely not one to just do friend favors, you know, no. he definitely read, he read the script, he's, he's very selective, and, and he identified with the part, and, and uh, you know, and he and I worked on some things, and, and yeah, so it was, it's, you know, it's a pleasure working with Cole, he's, he's, he's a, you know, superstar, so.
Yeah, and I know Randall and he, I know that he and Cole go way back and the, and the two of them worked together on The Last Champion two years ago. So I'm not surprised that Randall pulled, you know, pulled him in. But you, on t you're real. Your casting overall is exemplary. Jack Kilmer as Reno is absolutely perfect. Camille Collard as Vegas. But the real icing on the cake here is Stephen Dorff as Mayor Bishop. Wow, this is one of the best performances of Dorff's career. After I saw him in Old Henry, which was an early 20th century Western, I kept hoping that I would see him actually step into a full-blown 1800s, 1700s Western genre film because it suited him so well. And damn, if you didn't bring out the absolute best in him as Bishop. You and Dorf together, this is just an amazing collaboration because this is, it truly is one of the best things he's ever done. Thank you, yeah. And I, 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 you know, Stephen, Stephen and I uh, definitely uh, hit it off pretty well. And, and, um, and you know, he's, he's become a, a very close friend and, 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 you know, he, and I think it is, it's, it's like a mutual respect of work. We, we realize, you know, that we're, you know, we, we have some limits on these films, you know, we, we only have a certain amount of days and, and the budgets are, are, are you know, aren't, aren't nearly what, you know, the catering budget is on a Marvel movie. So we have to, uh, you know, so we have to, um, you know, we have to, strengthen our films in other areas which you know we try to do in, in the storytelling and the acting and and, and um, you know and, and so he, he really brings a character to life and, and he he came in with this one and he, he had the character nailed he's like this is what I'm doing this is how I'm walking and, and you know and we went over it and we, you know we went through like different hair looks I mean we really set a character and it was it was a lot of fun so well, and something that he really leans into here, and you don't shy away from, are the thema are the themes that are in this film. Not only is it a period piece, but we're also looking at the issue of PTSD post Civil War. Um, there was no such thing as PTSD back. You know, nothing was coined back at that stage in in history, but we really see that. And just when you think that. Bishop is just all out pure evil. We hear, and you very carefully pace this, and it's shot beautifully, where he talks about his men and why he does what he does. And you see the toll that war took on him, but also the compassion that he has and how much he cares about the men who fought with him. And I love how you brought that out. That's not something we normally have seen over the decades in a Western. So this is very refreshing to see this and to see how well you showcase this aspect of the character. Thank you, yeah. Yeah, no, it, it's, um, yeah, no, I appreciate all that. Yeah, no, it, it's a, it, it was a labor of love, this one, I think. You know, it's been around for a while, and, and, and uh, it's, it was the first Western, and, and, you know, I wanted to make sure it was something that the characters and the themes were very clear and, and true to the genre. You know, I didn't want to stray from um, the genre too much. Mm -hmm. You know, there's definitely kind of this pulpy feel to the movie. It's, it's a lot of fun. Well, and along with that pulpy feel, here, talk to me about working with Adam. Uh, on the cinematography, coming up with the visual design and the visual grammar that you guys have here. Because as I mentioned, you use Dutching perfectly. You've got some beautiful sun flares happening, and you really make the most of the entire town, as well as the landscape where you go into wide shots of beautiful vistas to keep us in time and place. What was your collaboration with Adam like? Because I know you've told me before you don't draw well, so I figure storyboards are out of the question here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know it's definitely, uh, you know, I'm, I'm I'm a stick figure guy, but um, you know, I I, I paint with my films because I love painting. My mom was a painter, and I mm -hmm. watch her paint, and and I just dream about painting, and but I didn't have that skill, with, you know, and so. Uh, filmmaking is my canvas and, and you know and, and you know and again art is always subjective and so it's so it's 
always refreshing to, you know, meet people who admire your art and, and are in champion, you know, and I, and I always appreciate that with you. And so with, with Adam, he's one of those guys that like, um, you know, he, he, he has this, uh, you know, he, he, he has this, uh, you know, background and, and with his brother. And, and so he's been on, um, you know, every type of movies that you could think of. And so when he, he always brings that kind of, uh, he always brings that kind of uh, um, eye to the set, you know, and, and we look for things that, you know, we can get within the time we have. You know, we try to we try to get these sunsets. We try to work for um, just the cool looks within the constraints we have because that's really where the time comes in, you know. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you could have three days to shoot a scene, you know, then you can shoot it at the same time every day and, and, and really really get it done well but when you have a couple hours it becomes a uh, you know logistics and so adam and i would sit out and we'd go over kind of a shot list of what we wanted to achieve and then what time we wanted it how we wanted it to look and then we would do our best to make that happen and and um, and so I, I, you know i think for the most part we did we did a, a fairly good job you know you, it's um as a filmmaker i'll, I'll watch the film and i'll be like it you know, here here's the scene where we you know, we had ten minutes. You know, <laughs> but, you know so that that <laughs> that gets difficult for me. But um, you know, uh, but I, I I think for the most part, um, you know, it's just you know, as, as an audience, I think people go in and, and uh, with westerns, they 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 go in just for the fun and and to see their favorite guys like you know uh, Cole and Forey and Mo tear it up. You know, yeah. And I mean, I'm so thrilled to see Randall in there, and he does very well in the Western genre as um, a surrogate sheriff, considering what happened to his predecessor. <laughs> but I've got to ask you, with time constraints on an indie, and with a period piece like this Western, the amount of action, these gunfights that you have, and you don't just have them as like a high noon shootout, one guy, in the, two guys in the middle of the street. You're utilizing, you've got from, you've got angles coming from balconies for the big third act shootout. You've got guys rolling off um, an awning onto the ground. You're on horseback with shootouts. You've got the Native Americans involved. We've got bow and arrow shootouts. We're hanging people. These are time consuming elements that make this film, help make this film what it is. How challenging logistically was that for you and Adam with all of that to coordinate and plot out? Um, it was extremely challenging. I mean, that's just, you know, you, you named all the stuff that's like super hard and, and you got to have a great team behind you. And, and, you know, we did. New Mexico is a, you know, a very solid state to film in mm -hmm. and they have some experienced people there and, and the producers from, you know, my wife to Jim Burleson, the Louise one, I mean, they all brought stuff to the table and they really, um, you know, they really supported us, um, to, to achieve those things. And that's, that's really it is it's, it's the behind the scenes people that, you know, um, that really make those things uh, uh, able to happen within the, you know, 15, 16 days you're shooting in, you know, so it's, it's, um, yeah, I know that's, that's where all that comes it comes together you know it's it's definitely a juggle mm -hmm. now you also edited the film now were you editing as you went brian did you just concentrate on directing and after it was done say okay now i'm going to put it together um what was that editing process like because i am very impressed with the pacing of this film um so i i you know i, I think a lot of people that have worked with me and especially on set they uh, they, they always call uh, they always um they say i shoot for the edit or like i'm a i, I direct for the edit mm -hmm. you know so it, it's it's about i guess i edit more in my head I, I don't ever have time to actually sit down and edit edit you know which i wish right. i did um you know if we could, if i could get the budget to have a huge DIT team and they were turning around footage I could um, but um, <laughs> you know typically I, I I have to edit my head so I'll, I'll be in a scene and, and uh, I'll know the way I want to cover it and then I'll sh shoot it and and um, uh, and then I'll know you know as 
because I'm shooting, I know I have pieces, so I won't, you know, and then I'll just pick up certain stuff because you only have a certain amount of time to shoot a scene. So um, rather than just, rather than doing take after take after take and, you know, and spending half a day on stuff, I'll know, okay, I've got this, I'm going to do, now I'm going to pick up this little piece, I'm going to pick up that little piece, and and, and, and then um, when I get into the edit, it's, you know, it's hopefully all there, you know, and, so, but for the most part, it, it works out. And, and yeah, I mean, I, I, I kind of edit in my head as I go. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that that helps you with a film with this much action in it and this and so many setups, because this is something that a lot of moviegoers don't realize. Every time you turn the camera in a different direction, every time you have a different angle, you got another setup happening. So you've got to stop, you got to reset everything, you got to move it around. And when you're hanging people on ropes and you're trying to get close-ups and you're also trying not to have your actors really be chafed by that really horrible rope that you were using, these are tedious and time-consuming. Yeah, no, it is, it is. Um, and that's, you know, it's, 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 it's always fun when a movie first comes out because you get the, uh, you know, it, it's, it's art. And, and you have to realize that going in, uh, you know, when you're an artist, you're a filmmaker, you're a director, not everybody's going to enjoy your art. You know, it's just the way it goes. I mean, there's, there's people that rag on Star Wars. It's like, yep. you know, so <laughs> it's, it's, you know, so you have to get a little bit of a thick skin and go, okay. Um, you know, when people start watching these and they start putting it up, up next to James Bond or Marvel movies or whatever, it's like, no, this is not the same level, um, you know, of filmmaking. It's just not. And, and you know, and um, and when so we're, we're, we're aiming at a certain target and, and that's what we're at. And, um, and so, um, yeah, it, it, it's just, uh, you know, and so, yeah, people, people don't understand that it's, it's, it is challenging to make a film like this in 15 days with, you know, two weeks of prep. I mean, that's, that's not, right. that's not easy. And, and I'd love for, you know, after these reviewers out there to go try it themselves. I think the reviews would change after they got into like day three. I don't think most of them wouldn't make it to day three, Brian. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> they wouldn't make it. Now I would be remiss not to ask you about the score you get Daddy Dorf in there. Steve Dorf is your composer. I love the music. The score is great. The needle drops are great. What were you looking for musically? Because we stay with that Western vibe in the score itself, in the motifs, and also with instrumentation. But then it gets pumped up a little bit with the needle drops, so it sounds a little more contemporary to what we think of as country music today. What were you looking for? What were your conversations with Steve like uh, for the music? Um, you know, I mean, Steve is an is a iconic. Yes. You know, he's, 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 he's done so many famous scores and for TV shows that we could all hum out right now, you know, and, and so it's like, um, you know, to have him involved was first a blessing, and then, and then secondly, just to um, be able to work with him on this stuff. And you know, and he watched the film, and he and I get together, and we talk about, okay, this is this is uh, this is what we're kind of going for, and this is what we can afford. You know, I mean, obviously, I, I wanted the big, magnificent seven James Horner, you know, kind of <laughs> score, and uh, and Steve kind of pulled me back down to reality a little bit, and was like, hey, man, you, you know. The London Symphony ain't, ain't doing this film for what you have, and so, um, and so we really kind of talked about what we could do. And, and Steve's in this, you know, he, he's in Nashville, and he's surrounded by some fantastic artists. And so we kind of went with this. Okay, well, let's kind of go with a, a, a Nashville country kind of twang. And um, and so he brought in um, all these all these really fantastic artists you know uh, we had Reba McIntyre's guitars on it uh, the harmonicas I mean everything wow. everything but the um, the actual uh, even some of the strings I mean we, he brought in a violinist I mean so a lot of the music is is is, is, re is like it's not you know it's not programmed uh, mm -hmm. or, or canned type music he actually brought in artists so you know, the harmonica you're hearing is real. The violins are real. The old time rag, ragtime piano was it was 
real. You know, we had, we had a guy come in and play that. Um, you know, he really, um, you know, he really put his heart and soul into the score, and, um, and it was amazing to have him on board. So. And what I love, you mentioned something important with the music. You mentioned the piano and that the saloon ragtime styling of the 1800s. That music was not played on a grand piano or something like that. That, just based on the sound of it, that was played on an upright piano, such as would have been used in the day. You can tell by the sound. I mean, that's, yeah. atten that's attention to detail. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, and, and that's, that's what makes, you know, Steve a great, you know, is, is he has this detail. And, and, um, <coughs> and we, re we really enjoy working together, so I, I, you know, and, and so it's, uh, you know, again, it, it, was, uh, it was a mutual admiration and probably more admiration on my side. But, you know, he's, uh, you know, to, to be able to have people of that caliber involved was, was fantastic. So now, where do we go from here? You've had all these Christmas movies in the past, which you and I have talked about before. You've got pot boilers, thrillers. You now have a Western, which I really hope I see you venture back into the Western genre because you really do an excellent job with it. But what's what's next for you? Um, so, yeah, we, we, we do have another Western in, uh, on the books. It's, uh, we're just currently in casting. It's called The Gunslinger, um, which will be a really fun one. Um, and then uh, I'm actually, right now, I just wrapped in Victoria, uh, B.C., in Canada, mm -hmm. uh, on a film called Cold Deck. And um, it's, a, uh, it's basically about a logger that, that finds a bag of money at a, at a campsite. You know, he's, he's, he's wandering, you know, he, he was working, and he goes. He goes for a wander, and, and finds this bag of money at this, you know, illegal campsite. And clearly, it's nefarious. And you know, and so he runs off with the money, and it ends up being a um, a cook site. And all these, you know, so all these really bad guys start chasing him for the money. Well, um, you know, and then there's a twist to the story that I won't spoil. No, but, don't um, spoil. It's, yeah, but it's it's action packed. <coughs> Again, a lot, lot of action. Um, it's got Clive Standen in it. It's got Steve Dorf, Stephen Dorf again. You know, Stephen Dorf came out for me again and just put an amazing character together once again. Uh, we've got Alec Baldwin in it. Um, we've got Lucy Martin from Vikings. Um, you know, Lachlan Monroe, um, Mike Dopez. Um, uh, you know, so it's 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 again another kind of ensemble. Uh, we got Jesse calf in it you know so it's it's like this great ensemble piece and uh and uh, and um it's a cool story you know it's really got a nice twist in the end that um i think people will enjoy oh i can't wait for that one and you mentioned a key word for me lachlan monroe one of my favorite character actors yeah he, put, he, uh, he does a great character on this show well what brian so well done I will forgive some of my issues I had with some of the bloodletting and the amount of blood used in certain instances. I can overlook that with this film because the rest of it, you paid attention where attention mattered. And you gave us a real rootin' tootin' shootin' Western. And I just love it. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Oh. Brian, thank you so, so much. And I hope we get to do this again for the next one. Oh, yes, for sure. It's a plan. Happy release day. Today is release day on this one, Dead Man's Hand. So, crossing my fingers, everybody goes out to see it. Every Yellowstone fan needs to see it. That's And if you get even half of those, you're going to be a happy boy. Yes, we will. Brian, thank you, and you have a wonderful weekend. Bye, uh, you too. Take care.